And welcome back, everybody, to the third episode of Season 2 of the California Only Rebuild. Or not really Rebuild, but just Fantasy Challenge. I guess Rebuild would be if there was already a team like that. But yeah, welcome back. Hope you guys are enjoying this season so far. We've had more victories at this point in the season than we had in the first. So definitely seeing more progress this week or this episode. We are going to be playing against the Chiefs, 49ers, Rams, and Bills. And first, we have to go through quite a few things that have popped up over here above me, technically. So let's start off with rivalry game. Obviously, the Chiefs are starting off much better than anyone else in the division as we currently sit third, tied for fourth, basically. Uh, you're facing a bitter rival in the Chiefs this week, and limiting the impact of Chase Young must be a top priority. Um... Let's challenge him, <laughs> I guess, by any means necessary. Like you said, limiting his impact has to be a top priority, and he's at the top of the list of players we aren't going to allow to beat us, I'm assuming is basically what it says. Beat the Chiefs, hold uh, Chase Young to two or fewer combined sacks and tackles for loss in this week's game. They also ask, Coach, you're up against the Chiefs this week, and they've been playing great football lately. They, they have been. I, I can't insult them. They're undefeated. I feel pretty good. They've looked unbeatable the last few weeks, but we have a locker room full of guys ready to step up to the challenge. I sure hope so, and we'll talk about that locker room in a second. The Chiefs are playing well, and all players will have plus 10 break tackle, uh, play recognition, and tackle for this game. To counteract that, basically, the vote of confidence has your team fired up for this week's game. All players will have that same boost. So, kind of counteracts each other. Beat the Chiefs to steal their momentum. Of course, we won't uh, be playing this game or even watching some of it. With it being such a drastic difference, they're seven or eight and zero. Oh, we're two and six. We will be simming uh, this game and getting into the next ones. But still, important things to go through here. Looks like it's going to be a heavy rain game as well. As my knee just cracked. I don't know if you heard that in the mic. Looks like it's going to be a rainy one for the entire game this week. And probably won't take long for the conditions to get pretty sloppy. We're best at running the ball. So that's what we'll try to stick with. Because whenever we try to run the ball, we actually do better passing. Which is weird. Slick football and rough footing will be hard to establish a good rhythm. Blah, 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 blah. Beat the Chiefs and rack up 150 plus pro uh, rushing yards. We never have that much rushing yards. Even with Christian McCaffrey, but we'll definitely give it a try. But as I was saying in terms of locker room, we are going to make a change up front. So let's jump on over to our roster here. As our current tackles aren't playing great. Our left tackle, uh, I believe, is Walker Little. And while he's young and could definitely progress to be a, a good, solid to good lineman for us, he gave up a lot of sacks the first season, has already given up 11, and we're only in week 9, I believe. So we're going to make a change, and I'm actually going to switch him out for Cedric Bryan. Now, the reason I didn't put Hayes in there is because Hayes is actually a much better run blocker than Cedric Bryan. So Hayes will actually be taking over for Mitchell Schwartz, who will drop to be our number 2 tackle, and then I'll put Little... Here as the number two backup kind of for us at tackle number three, I guess would be the, the best <laughs> way to put that there. Um, so then let's make that adjustment over here as well with putting Schwartz in at number two. So we are going to make a change up front and we'll see if that affects much. Um, basically doing it so that that way Cedric Bryan and Hayes actually start to develop a bit and get better. Hayes um, is a normal dev, but Brian does have hidden dev, and Walker Little has given up a lot of sacks. Doesn't mean that he won't play in the future, especially with some other guys aging at linemen, or at the line, uh, just overall linemen spots. But for now, we're going to make that change and see if that helps us up front at all. I know having a hidden dev guy up front could boost um, how we play. I know the, the CPU utilizes them differently they play better than sometimes their ratings are so hopefully that'll help out um, but like i said we're just going to be simming this game so i'm actually going to unmute the game itself as we are past those uh conference things because they play music even though i've turned music off 
But we will sim on over to next week and see if we got another victory, if we were able to get any of those stats that we were needing to get any boosts. Hopefully we do. And unfortunately we lose. And not in any good way, so I actually need to remute the game here. So we're going to jump through these um, things real quick. <laughs> Conferences and whatever. We'll, well, we'll figure things out and get back at it. The loss hurts, but that's all we could do at this point until we can see them again and have our chance to get even. And we will actually lose minus seven pass block power and pass block finesse for the next game. So we'll need to run next game. And then Richard Sherman comes to us. Man, I know those guys were pumped to deliver for you, to deliver for you, but we didn't get it done. Just knowing that showing up for the team, something, something. The team is disappointed with the loss, but morale remains stable after the vote of confidence, which is good. We don't need to be losing any ratings. That's <laughs> we can't really afford to do that. Uh, let's see what else we have. The so rain game. Coach, is that a loss where you gather the team, chalk it up to the conditions, and immediately move on? No, we lost 33-14. to 14. If they could score 33, we should be able to score 33. I don't think so. Both teams had to deal with the conditions, and we're not ones to make excuses. They were a better team than us, and we have to learn and get better from it. Yeah. And now we'll have a minus 3 in run game power, in run block power, in run block finesse. So it's at least less of a damage than the pass blocking but not great now in this next game against the 49ers they are four and four so a good decent chance we could get a victory also looks like we had a weekly award as well despite the loss and that is Blake Martinez who had 12 tackles and a sack so good for him but I guess the other guys not so much considering they scored 33 on us but yeah, so we'll watch a bit of the San Francisco game. I'm going to jump through the weekly strategy, upgrade some guys, and we'll get into this game. Jumping in here late into the fourth quarter, and this game has not been very nice to us, to say the least. We're down 45-14. It was pretty close for the first half, and then the third quarter, it's been all San Francisco. And until now, same with the fourth quarter. Or I can't really say until now, but not much going our way. JJ gets the catch here at least. Tried to make something of this fourth quarter, get some more points on the board, but... Now, definitely has not gone in our favor today. We will be at least losing two games today, unfortunately. These were the, this was the equivalent episode to the last season where we actually started winning. So, hopefully we'll get another two victories here today. Or at least one would be nice. Junior Generals gets the catch there, but not a good day for Mills. Only completed half of his passes and does have three interceptions. And we were focusing on short passing because it said their defense was not good at covering anybody. So that's what we focused on. And unfortunately, I think Madden lied to us because clearly <laughs> they're doing pretty good. Simifei Hoko, three catches for 33 yards. We're going to find him again here for a few more, but not a whole lot happening for us on the day. Again, just want to get in the end zone one last time for a little bit of pride. See what our uh, tackles, our new tackles can do as well. They get the nice block there. I believe that was our left tackle. Hayes is at right. Brian, I believe, is at left. So, from what I've seen so far, they're doing all right. We're going to hit the two-minute warning here. Again, not really fighting for much. Just want to get some more points on the board and call this game done as San Francisco clearly was a lot better than what we were thinking they would be. 
or we just played much worse, but some good blocking there at the tackle spots. McCaffrey gets forward for a gain of a couple. Actually, gain of five. A lot more than what I thought it was going to be. Minute 56 remaining. We come out in an empty set on second and five. And this looks like it will be <laughs> an incompletion. Threw that off the back of one of our linemen's hel helmets. I was going to say heads, but technically also their head. But at least there's some protection there. Empty set again. Going to go for the corner. And Ertz almost caught that one. And what was pretty close to triple, almost quadruple coverage. And it looks like we'll be kicking the field goal here rather than going for any touchdown. Unless we... Nope. Will be a field goal attempt here. We will get it through, though, 45-17. And we'll go ahead and finish up this game. And that will do it for this one. We will be losing 45-17. or 45 to 17. I wish it was just 14 to something. No, 45-17. We head up north, and San Francisco destroys us in this one. Honestly thought it would be a much closer game than this, especially after uh, seeing where we were at at half at the uh, halftime. I believe it was 24-14, so 10-point game wasn't too far off, but second half was definitely just San Francisco, as you can see there. Only mustered up three points in the entire second half. But that is not all that we have to do in week 10. We do need to choose a few of our uh, college players here, our scoutees, that we want to select as uh, specific workouts for, or focus scouting, for the next week, week 11. So again, we'll kind of run through what we're looking like here, equivalent to the scouting special, I guess, of the Viking series. We do have one potential quarterback who could be a backup as he's potential undrafted, and Edward Feldman, 6'1", 209, 21 years old out of USC. He has some speed, has some strength, has some throw power, nothing spectacular in terms of his skills. F awareness, G carrying, B stiff arm, C throw on the run, nothing spectacular. Would probably be an undrafted pickup for us like the last quarterback in the last class. Uh, running back wise, we do have one potential option. That is Philip Agnew, 5'8, 204, 22 years old out of UCLA. And with him, not much speed, not much strength. He's just quick. But don't ask him to be too quick in changing directions because that's not going to happen. Looks like he's a receiving back with A spec catch, B kick return, and B carrying. He cannot block, and he's not. Too aware of what's happening around him. But again, potential undrafted guy. So not expecting too much there. No fullbacks at receiver. We have a few options. Uh, we got five to be specific. First one, Mike Porter. 5'10", 186 pounds. 22 years old again out of UCLA. A lot of speed. Also has some strength and some agility and acceleration as well. Skills... A stamina, B carrying. He does have C release and D deep route running. So nothing spectacular there. Maybe a third, or not a third, definitely not a third. Maybe fourth, fifth round guy. Um, thinking he's probably projected a little higher than what his overall skill is. Then there was Jelani Rucker. 5'8", 179 pounds, 23 years old out of San Jose State. Has some speed, has acceleration and agility. Not much strength. His skills, A kick return, I about assumed that. F for release and stiff arm and juke move. And does have B ball carrier, uh, ball carrying vi or carrier vision. Ball carrying vision? Carrier. I think it's carrier. Um, so, again, not a whole lot happening there. Again, probably slightly over overrated in terms of projection. Day three, we have Will Tobias, another UCLA guy. 6'5", 219, 22 years old. He has some speed, but he's definitely more of the strong possession type. So I'm, th I'm thinking more like a JJ or Sega Whiteside. Uh, with him, C deep route running, C short route running, C spin move. Does have B stiff arm. That is high on your board. And D injury. So nothing spectacular, but definitely some guys we could pick up to try to just get younger. The receiving spot, especially the backups. Uh, Pat Carther is projected undrafted, 6'2", 227, 22 years old, also out of UCLA. 
Not really any speed, but does have some strength. Um, it's not very good. Just across the board. Does have C catching. Uh, what was this size? 6'2", 227. Could maybe transition him over to tight end. Possibly. Don't know if he could block much. Uh, Christian Cole. Which I believe the J.J. or Sega Whiteside is being moved over to tight end. Or at least the Eagles were thinking about it. Uh, but Christian Cole. 6'5", 231. 23 years old out of UCLA. And with him, again, not much speed, but pretty strong. Another option to probably move over to tight end. Uh, C catch and traffic and C spec catch. It's about all the important ratings that we know. F stamina, C injury, but again, someone that could possibly be moved over to tight end. Be interesting. Um, actually, at tight end, there is Kevin Hanna, who is 6'6", 246, 22 years old out of Cal. And again, strength, not much speed. Uh, skills, B run block, B trucking, F deep route running, C spec catch. So definitely looks to be more of a blocking tight end, which we don't necessarily need. Maybe could be someone that we can move to fullback. It'd be a large fullback for sure at 6'6", six, six, but an option. Uh, then at left tackle, we have some potential undrafted guys. Pat Wilkins, 6'5", 209, 24 years old out of Cal, so definitely on the older side. Has some speed, not much strength, also has agility, acceleration. For him, we have C for lead block, pass block finesse, and run block power, as well as awareness, and then B impact block, which for a potential undrafted, not awful. Just doesn't have much strength, which you kind of hope your linemen do. Uh, then there's also Darrell Short, 6'6", so not short at all, 296, 21 years old, out of Cal. And with him, we have, again, some speed, some agility, uh, not a whole lot of acceleration, and not much strength. But he does have A impact block, B stamina, but he also has F run block power, D awareness, and C injury. So, not very good. He's also dropped 72 spots this season. He was already potential undrafted. Then there is Bar Bobby Parks, who's one of the higher projected offensive linemen. 6'4", 316, 22 years old, out of Stanford. And with him, he has some speed, agility, acceleration, some strength as well. Skills, A run block finesse, A stamina, A lead block. Does have C run block, but B awareness. So some really good, some not so good. He's a guy to consider for a workout, so I'm going to jot him down in my notes. At center, we do have a potential undrafted in Ryan Mellon. 6'1", 290, 22 years old out of USC. And with him, some speed, some acceleration, not much agility nor strength. Skills, D awareness, D run block finesse, C stamina, C pass block power, A injury. So, at least he's not going to get injured that often if he could get on the field. Right guard, another potential undrafted in Andrew Ruiz. 6'2", 304, 23 years old, out of USC. Again, very similar to a lot of these linemen. Has some speed, acceleration, agility, not much strength. Skills, B run block finesse, C lead block, D pass block finesse, D stamina, and D awareness. At right tackle, there is at least one potential guy to be drafted in Luis Guerrero, who is 6'7", 336, so a big old dude, 22 years old out of UCLA. Physicals. He has strength, not much speed, has some acceleration, and can change direction. And unfortunately, not much of a lead blocker, nor finesse, but it would make sense with how big he is. D, lead block and pass block finesse. C, pass block with C, run block. So interesting, would definitely be a backup at best. Uh, there is also a right tackle, potential undrafted, in Kevin Pollard. 6'5", 309, 22 years old out of UCLA. Again, some speed, some agility, not much else. Skills, F pass block, F pass block finesse, D run block power, C impact block, but hey, A stamina. That's got to count for something. Just not putting him really on our board would be someone potentially we pick up as an undrafted and put him on the practice squad. And then for the main guys that I think we need to look at, being DTs. First up is actually all these DTs are 100% scouted. So we know that Tresmond Reed is actually around one to two. 
Josh Barton is actually a potential undrafted, so he goes down a lot. Um, then Nicholas Parker goes down from a three to four to a day three, and then Roman Hightower is actually a day three. So we're hoping these guys would be a little bit better. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like to, that's the case. Uh, but Tresmond Reed, who will probably be one of our first round picks, he is a run stopper, 6'3", 306, 22 years old, out of Stanford. Physicals, really good. Has a lot of speed, agility, acceleration, change of direction. He could jump even if you need it, and he's pretty strong. Skills, we have, to highlight good to worse, A, play recognition and injury. Then we have B for awareness, pass block, finesse moves, power moves, hit moves, and impact blocking, and then, or impact block, and then D, or sorry, C for tackle, and then D for pursuit and stamina. So, a, I mean, really good, well-balanced guy. They say he's a run stopper. He's just a good defensive lineman, and we definitely need that for sure. So, Tresman Reed will be one of our top end guys. Oh, we didn't even look at the rest. I just skipped on. Now, Josh Barton, they say, is actually a potential undrafted, which is really unfortunate. He's 6'4", 297, 22 years old, also out of Stanford. Now, he has some speed, some acceleration, and some agility. Not much strength. Uh, and he's not a good jumper, either. Now, with him, I see what, why there he's actually a potential undrafted. Again, best to worst. D, play recognition. Or did I say D? I meant B. Uh, B tackle, B impact block, B injury. Then there's C awareness and C finesse moves, D block shedding and pursuit, and then F power moves, stamina, and hit power. So, not good. <laughs> um, has some finesse capability and would probably play a, a left end, right end for us, but still not great. Will we still probably end up with him? Most likely. Then there is DT Nicholas Parker, 6'4", 305, 22 years old, out of Cal. And for him, we have a lot of speed, a lot of strength, and acceleration. Everything else, iffy. Skill set, we have B play rec and power moves, B stamina, impact block, and injury, which pretty good. Then C, awareness, block shedding, finesse moves, hit power, and then D, tackle. So, interesting guy. Would we probably end up with him? I hope so. We need as much D lineman as we could get because we don't have a lot of good depth. And even our starters are a little iffy. Uh, another guy is Roman Hightower. He is 6'6", 308, 22 years old, also out of UCLA. A lot of UCLA in this draft. At least for us. Uh, speed, not bad. Acceleration, not bad. Does have some good strength. And for him, we have B play rec, B block shedding, and B injury. With C awareness, finesse moves, hit power, and stamina. And then D power moves, pursuit, and tackle. So definitely looks like another DT. 6'6", throw weight, pretty good size for us as well. Plus he had some strength. Would it be a bad guy to get? They're all 100% scouted, so I don't need to add any of them to the board. Then there is Aries Bradley, another potential undrafted. 6'6", 257, 22 years old out of UCLA. And with him, have acceleration. That's about it. And Fs across the board. I don't think we really need to look anymore. Just not that, not that good. At middle linebacker, there is Stephen McCoy. And he is 6'3", 250, 22 years old. Also, again, UCLA. And with him, not much speed, but he does have agility, acceleration, and change of direction. He could jump a little bit and has some strength. So the opposite kind of style of linebacker that I normally draft in the Vikings series. And with him, B stamina, C pursuit, and then D power moves, hit power, and impact block. We don't know anything about coverage or block shedding, which I'm assuming he's most likely going to be a run stopper. We don't really need a starter at middle linebacker, but could we still end up with him? It's likely. <laughs> at right outside linebacker, there is Nathan Gregory, who I believe is actually the highest projected as an actual round one. And I didn't talk about anything else. Uh, 6'4", 266, 22 years old, UCLA. Physicals, really good for the most part. Uh, good speed, solid to good speed. He's pretty strong as well, and somehow my phone thinks I'm talking to Bixby. 
Interesting. <laughs> uh, skill set wise, A power moves with A awareness, B tackle, and B stamina. So, potential we go with Nathan Gregory as our first pick, and then the uh, DT, whose name I am not remembering, uh, Tresman Reed as our number two, perhaps. I will mark Nathan Gregory as another guy to uh, have be one of the special scouts for us, or focus scouting, just so we could get the full picture if my phone would let me log in. All right. It's got him writ wrote written down, just so I remember. Um, there's also potential undrafted in Mitch Simpson, 6'4", 268, 23 years old, also out of UCLA. We'll just be drafting their whole team. He has acceleration. That is all. And he has D block shedding and man coverage as well as pursuit with F catching and finesse moves. Really hope he's a power moves guy. Then at corner, we have some day threes. And they'll probably be uh, completely scouted by the time we get to the end of the season. We'll start with Jabari Lowell. Or Lowell, possibly. Uh, he's a man-to-man -man guy. 5'10", 182, 21 years old out of UCLA. And with him... Wait, how tall was he? 5'10", not great. Uh, really fast, has good acceleration and pretty decent change of direction. Everything else is a little suspect. But we have C-man coverage, B-press, D-zone coverage with B-tackling. If he has some higher block shedding, he could definitely be a slot corner. And I feel like he could be a little higher than day three. So, not bad with Lowell. Lowell. Lowell, let's call him Jabari. <laughs> in the uh, day threes, we have Will Macy, or Massey. Again, it kind of depends. I've heard things pronounced 27 different ways. He's a zone guy. 6'3", 184, 23 years old out of UCLA. Has some speed. Has acceleration. Has some agility. Not much else. And with him, it does say zone. So I'm assuming zone might be a C. Uh, hard to tell. But he does have B block shedding and B tackle, so could definitely be a slot corner. Unfortunately, he has D press, D man coverage, and D awareness with D hit power and F injury. So not great, but we could definitely use some depth. And projected undrafted, we have Enrique Goodwin, who's 5'9", 182, 22 years old out of San Jose State. And with him, not much in terms of physicals. Uh, F zone coverage, so that's great. With A stamina, does have B block shedding. And then D catching, press, play recognition, and awareness. So he's not a smart guy whatsoever. Will probably again be a guy we pick up as an undrafted. Fortunately, no free safeties. And there is one strong safety. And that is Dante Reese, 5'10", 223, 22 years old, out of San Diego State. And with him... Has some speed. That's about it. Another F for coverage, for zone coverage. C play rec, C tackle, D awareness, D injury. So not a whole lot happening there. I think we'll need to choose maybe another lineman if there is another offensive lineman to be a scout, uh, scouted player for us. So let's take a quick look. We have Parks. Yeah, all, all the rest of them weren't great. Uh, the receivers didn't look that good either. So I'll put Stephen McCoy on here just to see if he is a uh, just a run stopper. I hope he is at least a run stopper. But Stephen McCoy, middle linebacker, we could definitely use some depth there. So I got those written down so I don't forget their names. So that's the update that we have on scouting. The defense is definitely better than the offense, but there's not a whole lot of talent throughout. Basically, there's the top end guys and then not a whole lot past them. So we might be using some of our later picks to either just fill depth or maybe even do some trading. Not quite sure. We'll see what all is available. But that's all we have to do this week. I'll sim on over to week 11. I'll do, I'll sign those uh, scouts and then we'll jump in to the Rams game and See how we do? Hopefully better than the last two games. And we are jumping in here to the second half of this game. And it's been pretty close. 
Uh, they, uh, the Rams did score just before the end of the first half, so it was a pretty close game. All we've been able to do on offense is get field goals. We've driven down the field, but just haven't been able to punch it in. Currently, we're down 17-9. One possession game would like to keep it that way, but we're going to need some plays as we get close to the sack. They're going to throw this one away. Daniel Jones is their quarterback, 12 for 15 on the day. Two passing touchdowns as they come out with a bunch formation on third and one. They will be going for a pass, going to dump it off. And there's, oh, we do force a fumble, but the ball falls out. That was Bobby Okariki that uh, forced the strip, but unfortunately not able to uh, have that fall in bounds for us. They will continue to, well, hold on to the ball as well as the, get the first down. But this is a game that is one we should be able to win. They are three and six, I believe, on the season. We are two and six, dropped back down to the last spot in the AFC West with the back-to-back -back losses. As it looks like Cooper gets the reception and close to another first, but they will call it second and inches. And on second and inches, they come out with a tight formation, and we're in one of our base packages. Might have been a 46, maybe, or a 4-4. They will get the first down. That is Mitchell. That's de decent game. Eight carries, 30 yards. Not bad. They'll stay out in that same formation here on first down. They're going to run to the outside here. They get a good block on Paulson Adebo. Shake off the first tackler and Reed finally gets him down after a gain of three. And they stay out. And again, some heavy formations here. This is an ace formation as they go again to the outside. And good blocking. That'll be a first down and a little bit more as he heads out of bounds. That's Matt Breida, who has a lot of speed, and he used it there. And I'll follow that up with a bunch to the bottom of the formation here. Looks like we might be running some man coverage, the way at least we lined up. And we had a good stop there, but shed the at least shed the uh, first tackle. Didn't really gain much after, but we'd like to see those cleaned up a little bit more as they go for a quick pass. Going to find number three. Will Fuller, I think that might maybe said. He'll get the first down if that is Fuller. I, I could barely read the back of that jersey. Either way, first down here for the Rams. And they'll follow that up by going empty. Three to the top, two to the bottom. It'll be a pass down the seam, and we almost get the pick with Justin Reed. Number three switched over to play safety on that and gets the pass breakup. As they'll tighten this formation down after spreading wide the last play. So we had a blitz go in, but a nice pickup as they find number 85. That's Kittle with the first down reception. Down to the 11. And like I said, we are down by 8 points. So we really don't want to go down anymore. Offense hasn't even gotten a touchdown yet. And there's a sack, Everson Griffin. Also had, I think, Tack McKinley coming around the edge too, but... Haven't seen much from Griffin. We might be giving one of our rookies the start for the remainder of the season. We'll check the stats after this game, see if Griffin has gotten any more production. If not, that change might need to be made. And on second and 19, they'll come out with two tight ends to the bottom, two receivers to the top, and that's where they're going. Number 19 gets the catch and stumbles down. Again, that's Cooper. We should have been able to tip that pass away or get a pick, but... Not much awareness there from the corners to jump that third and 12 coming up. And on third and 12 from the 12, they have a bunch at the bottom, a lone receiver up top. And they're going to go down to the bottom here. Kittle, who goes out of bounds after the three-yard catch. Fourth and eight. They will be kicking a field goal. This would put them up 11 with a, about a quarter of a quarter and a quarter remaining. And <laughs> to bring that back from, I think it was the Vikings... Uh, season three Texans episode and of course we will be watching this possession as well just to see if they could do anything here they really haven't done much in terms of getting touchdowns all game Christian McCaffrey gets the handoff good forward for about a gain of five or six for him so far on the day eight rushes 41 yards nothing spectacular but really just not much has happened I don't know if the Rams have just had the ball a lot more or what McCaffrey does pick up a nice block, but no one gets open. And 69, Lucas gets around the edge and gets the tackle. Third and 13 coming up from the 21. I'll credit that more as a coverage sack as 
he should have been able to throw it well before the time that he got sacked. And we're checking it down here, third and 13. Gain of three, maybe four. Not really what we need. Mills, though, 12 completions on, I think it said 30 attempts. So just a lot of incompletions on the day, and that's about it for this drive. We'll go into a little bit more of some quick simming here. Daniel Jones runs for six yards and then throws away on second down. Third and four, loss of two. Nice stop for the defense. Going to force a punt here, and we'll take over. And as we start the fourth quarter here, hopefully the offense can do something. Come out in an empty set. Three to the top, two to the bottom. Go for a quick pass underneath to JJ. And where Mills is most accurate is underneath passes. Unfortunately, underneath passes typically don't give you a whole lot of extra yards after the catch here in Madden. And in Sim, you really need that. However, we'll take the six on first down. We still need a lot of points. We need 11 points to tie the game here. Go underneath Junior Generals with a spin move. He breaks to the outside. A nice block by Christian McCaffrey. He's going down the sideline. 27 is coming in, and he's going to get the tackle. But we're down to the 14. Big play, Junior Generals. Or, yeah, Junior <laughs> Generals breaks the tackle, reverses field, and gets around the edge. That block by McCaffrey. Key to allowing that big gain, and a gain we desperately needed. As you see here, he gets the catch, spins off of nobody, then breaks off of row and gets get gets around the edge. Unfortunately, he ends up getting caught. But we're all the way down to the 14. We have looks like two receivers at the bottom, one to the top as well as Schultz or not Schultz, uh, Ertz. McCaffrey goes out for there as well. We go back to JJ. He's been a pretty reliable possession guy, or at least has grown into that role. Junior Generals has def definitely been the big play threat for sure. Because that's where we're going, and he's going to get the catch out of bounds. Preserve a little bit of time, because again, we still need two scores. Come out first and goal, bunch to the bottom of the formation. Got JJ alone up top. And as we go down the middle, that's going to be a touchdown to one of our backups in De or DeAndre. I think it's DeAndre Carter who comes in, spells out somebody, probably maybe Generals. I don't know if he, oh, he's on the sideline, so I'm going to assume spelled out Generals, and he will get the touchdown. Going to bring this game back and hopefully will allow us to at least strike back again and take the lead with a good stop for our defense that we will desperately need. Now it looks like we are going for two here. Same formation as the one we just scored in. This would make it a three-point game with a conversion. As we basically go to that same route, this time Ertz gets it 20-17. to 17. A stop from our defense is needed. A field goal will tie it. A touchdown could win it. And with so much on the line, we'll continue to watch here. They come out an empty set. Three up top, two at the bottom. As they will drop back and go... To the bottom here, number 25, they find Mitchell with the first down. So far, Rams looking pretty good. Typically, they don't have a very hot offense, but against us, looking pretty solid. I mean, 20 points isn't a whole lot, but from what when we've watched, they've looked consistent. So we get the run stuff there. Solomon Thomas, nice job. 11 rushes, 32 yards. So not great in terms of average. About three per rush for Mitchell. That was a Debo that they give credit to the tackle for, surprisingly. So they go for a quick pass. That's going to be Kittle who gets the completion. I believe that was Martinez who then laid the hit as soon as he caught the ball. That brings up a third and two. Looks like we're out in our nickel formation. They're making an audible on offense, changing the play, bringing up a tighter formation as we bring our corner in as well. But they get the blocking and much more than what they needed. <laughs> down to about the 46 is Mitchell with the first down. Time slowly ticking away. And on first down, they'll come out in a shotgun formation. One receiver all the way at the bottom, two up top. We'll see what they do. They go with the slant pattern. You know I love that in the Vikings series. <laughs> Scored many touchdowns on that. They get nine yards. <laughs> they get nine yards on that one. Come out under center here. I formation. Going to bring number three in motion. They're going to hand it off right down the middle. No one there for us until after the first down. Griffin gets the tackle. Should have, could have, and would have been a lot more on that if, you know, Madden let them run a little bit better. 
about two and a half minutes remaining. They're at the 33. As we get a good blitz. There is a flag down. Don't know if there was a late hit after the pack. Yeah. That's going to go on Blake Martinez. Going to bring them all the way down to the 13. Running back came in and tried to chop the legs out from under him. Jumped up and the momentum, I'm assuming, just carried him into the quarterback. The flag came out. And there's a touchdown. Number three on a curl route against... Lewis Marshall, and that one's going to give another touchdown, and it is Will Fuller. It's going to be a touchdown to Fuller and rewiden that lead to too much. <laughs> With an extra point, it would be a, le or a 10. And once again, we find ourselves in a situation that we had a chance late in this game, but just things didn't all come together very well. Schultz with a nice catch there. Schultz will probably get a lot more starts for the remainder of the season as well. Ertz is getting a bit older, and Schultz is definitely skilled enough to be a starter for us. So we'll probably look to make that change as we come out in a tight formation here. Only two minutes remaining. Quick pass to McCaffrey. It's about nine-ish. I'm going to say about nine and all but an inch for a first down. Drop back again. Free rusher. We break a tackle. Oh, that was Buckner. I saw Rams wearing 99, and I just assumed that was Donald that Mills broke a sack from. But nope, it was not, and then we get sacked anyway. Third and 14. Plenty of time. Nice connection there. Simi Fehoko down to the 18. Wow, that could have easily been picked, maybe even intercepted, but just found its way right into the breadbasket as we dump this one off again. Fehoko gets that catch down at the 14, under a minute remaining. We need a lot. We need a miracle for sure, and that pass was not it. 21 of 40 on the day. Does have over 300 passing yards, but doesn't quite help if <laughs> there's not the touchdowns to back it up. Drop back again. Quick pass, and that one blocked, tipped, knocked away by number 98, and we'll go for the field goal here. If we get this, we'll need an onside and a touchdown with two timeouts remaining. 45, 46 seconds. We get the field goal. Now we need to get an onside kick. And let's see if we could do it. The rest of this game all hinges on this. And that goes straight to Fuller who picks it up. Holds on to it. We get the tackle. 44 seconds left. That should be enough for them to knee out one play. We have two timeouts. Won't say it's impossible, but it's definitely not likely. And they are coming out in a formation that will re most likely require an actual play to be run. As they go down the middle, stretch to the outside, first down, and that game's a wrap. They will come out here to kneel out the rest of this clock. We'll, we, we might call a timeout. I don't think we should, but yep, there it goes. Either way, we will be dropping this game. Battle of Los Angeles, 27 to 20. We had a chance, but just we couldn't get the job done on defense. There's a lot of work we need to do, but hopefully we'll see some of it start to come. Definitely, I'm going to put in some of the backups for the remainder of this game, or for the remainder of uh, this episode, and they'll continue into the next episode as we finish out this season hopefully with some more wins to wrap out just the rest of this season. We got four last year. I feel like we should be able to get four this year. And after simming on over to the next week, we see the Bills are 5-5, five and five, and this is the last game we'll do a little bit of this episode. Their offense is actually worse than our offense in terms of overall. Their defense, though, a lot better than ours. We see we are all the way at the bottom of the AFC West, 2-9. and nine. Raiders are 3-7, and seven. so there's a chance we could jump ahead. The Broncos, 4-6, and six. so if they go on a slide and we could finish out the rest of the season strong, there's some hopes we don't finish on the bottom. I've made a couple adjustments to the roster in terms of depth charts. Some younger guys will be playing in the starting spots or in some role positions a little bit more for the remainder of the season, specifically ones that... Either the guys that are in front of them may or may not be in front of them next year or even on the team next year. Or they might just be in line to be starters and need to see what they could do. Different kinds of situations like that. Um, 
but a couple of adjustments have been made, so we will see that a little bit in this game. Probably, maybe, not exactly sure how much of this game we will uh, watch. Uh, we'll probably watch about the first quarter, see how that goes, and then judge from there. Um, but before we do any of that, let's take a look to see if any of those guys that we had selected for a focus scouting, if we learned anything more about them. So I know the first one was a left guard, I believe, in Parks, and he's up to an 80, so we did learn a bit more about him. We know he's an agile guy, and what all do we know? So A stamina, A run block finesse, A injury, A lead block, B awareness, and then uh, also B pass block finesse, C run block, D pass block. So much more of a run blocker than a pass blocker, which is unfortunate. Uh, but playing on the inside, you can get away with that a little bit. We will most likely be spending our first round picks on some D linemen. So if he's still available in the second, we could take him. He would probably be a guy who sits on a bench for a year or two. He might just sit behind DeCastro and have him be a focus or something, but not bad. And then let's see what our other guys look like. So we had middle linebacker, Stephen McCoy, who doesn't look like he got anything out of the scouting. Still at 50, and nothing new looks to appear there. So didn't learn anything about Stephen McCoy. And then doesn't look like we learned about anything from Nathan Gregory either, which is unfortunate. Would have liked to get a more full, well-rounded this idea about him, but most likely Gregory and then the defensive tackle, or at least listed defensive tackle, and Tresman Reed will most likely be our first round picks. Again, also a one to two, kind of varies a little bit. And if we end up taking him before the alignment, I think he's better. So kind of just take him <laughs> where they fall, I think. But that's the only bit of extra scouting that we learned was for the uh, alignment. And we're gonna jump into a little bit of some sim here, and on the first play of the game, we get a sack from Solomon Thomas. They get six yards on the next, and then Melvin Gordon gets them the first down, doubling the yards needed. Just rubbing it in our face a little bit. Gonna bring up another third down with that throwaway. Melvin Gordon gets it again. So far, Melvin Gordon being an issue, we at least make him lose a few yards here on first down. Uzma gets five on second. Now third and eight, Gordon back again, gets 10. They continue their drive pass thrown away by Tua. Five yards on second down from Gordon, third and five. Another 14 yards, Melvin Gordon. Using him just all over, passing and running. Uzma close to the goal and in for Melvin Gordon. I <laughs> figured we all kind of saw that going. We'll see how we can do on our first drive. As it looks like we'll be starting with a touchback. And on our first down, no yards gained. Nice. Then throw away. Even better. Third and 10. 15 yards to McCaffrey. We see you, Gordon, and raise you, McCaffrey. Gets us five on first down as well. Then we'll lose three. That's fine. Third and nine. 16 to Simi Fei Hoko. Nice, nice. 10, Christian McCaffrey. Getting us down to the 32. Another nine yards. 23. Another four. Just keep handing the ball off to McCaffrey, who gets eight there. Going to bring up a first down. Down to the three, and McCaffrey... Nope, throw away, touch, uh, throw away no touchdown. Nap. Two-yard penalty, okay. Third and one. There's the touchdown for McCaffrey. Kind of saw that one coming. We'll continue this, maybe get towards halftime. See uh, kind of how the game is feeling out. And on first down, 12 to Uzma. Tight ends and running backs doing the work here for the Bills. And then seven there for Gordon. Second and three. Th pass thrown away by Tua. Third and three. Incomplete thrown away again. Will force a punt, hopefully. Yes, and it looks like a good punt at that, too. That was downed at the two. So let's jump in and see what our offense can do here. And hopefully avoid a safety. Knock on wood again. So we'll come out with a heavy set, three tight ends. And we're going to hand it off McCaffrey down the middle. Good blocking. Oh, kind of wish he cut right, but he's still going to get forward for about nine yards, averaging 5.3 a carry so far as McCaffrey. 
And in terms of changes on the offense, not a whole lot. Schultz is getting the start at tight end. So you'll probably see him a bit more as that one's intercepted, attended for intended for junior generals, but picked off by Conley. Down to the 11, Bills should have an easy touchdown from here. And since there's not a whole lot of yards to go, we'll watch here, see what Gordon can do. Um, on defense-wise, we do have our rookie all-around line as that pass just bounces off of number nine. Um, but we do have our rookie lineman. You see him out there. I think he's wearing number 74 towards the top. That is Coleman. He's playing a little bit of uh, edge end for us in the base formations. And then whenever we go to nickel, he slides down to be an interior pass rusher, as you see here, lined up still with uh, Harrison Phillips. As that pass thrown through the goalposts, Incomplete. We'll take that. Fourth and four. That went quick. I feel like we missed a play. Either way, field goal attempt coming up here. Uh, but the other change on defense is uh, Darren Hall is getting the start at slot. Uh, Lewis Marshall is out for this game, or at least on the bench. Uh, besides all that, I think uh, Cedric Bryan, one of our rookies, gets a penalty on first. Uh, but besides all those changes... Is it not going to automatically go? Did I not select go until change of possession? I maybe did not. First and 27-yard rush, Davis Mills. Uh, but besides those changes, we do have a new free safety in uh, Curtis Riley, I believe, which we might get to see fairly soon as we have to punt this one away. I think we'll continue simming through here as we're down 10-7 with about m most of the second quarter remaining. Uh, but Curtis Riley's in at free safety. Sherman is out because most likely Sherman will retire. So we need to see what other viable options we have at free. Third and one, Uzma gets the first down. Tight ends and running back going to work here. Robbie Anderson finally gets a play. Melvin Gordon loses two on second. Third and four, Hunter Renfro gets the completion for a first. Keenan Allen popping in too. They have some big names. Why haven't they been using them? Another six to Renfro. Melvin Gordon down to the goal line. And that's going to be in. Tua's going to run it in himself. Going to put them up. We get the block kick, though. So only 16-7. to 7. Still not great, though. We need to see what all viable options we have as backups. On offense, most of the starters that we have are going to be the starters for a while. Christian McCaffrey basically in charge of our offense this game so far. Inside the two-minute warning now. There's Junior Generals, 15 yards. 20 to Christian McCaffrey and a pass as well. Simi Fehoko gets seven, and we're at the ten. Thrown away third and three, I believe, coming up yet. Ten yards. That's going to be a first down, basically, at the goal line. And another rush in for Christian McCaffrey. Going to bring this game a little bit closer. 16-14 to 14 just before half. And I feel like we've given up a lot of inside two-minute scores here on defense. So let's, let's watch, see what happens, see if we have anyone who can make some plays or... Not. Uzma with a big gain. Tight end right down the middle. We had no one across the middle. That's going to be an easy completion for them. Down close to, uh, at least getting close to field goal range. Probably need about another 10, 15 yards, depending on who their kicker is. And they'll go again, and no one there. They're going to mark that as a fumble and then immediately blow the whistle. We'll take the loss, for sure. I wish it was also a sack, but we'll take that. Loss of seven on that first down screen pass. Going to set up second and 17 at the 37. 45 seconds going and thrown out of another sack. Two of 13 of 20 on the day, 139 yards. As they come out with a heavy tight end set, three at the bottom. And they go for a run and could have been a huge one. We call our second timeout. One timeout remaining for us and we should be getting the ball back. And with 31 seconds left, we'll start at the 20. At basically the 21. And first pass, intercepted. They were going for junior generals there. A good play by number 30. And now Buffalo will be within 5, 10 yards of field goal range with a timeout. And we've all seen turnovers cost us a lot in this series. And... Mills is definitely one to have thrown quite a few interceptions. Solomon Thomas, though, gets in with a sack. Tack McKinley also provi uh, provided a lot of pressure there as well. And doesn't 
or they did take their timeout, so they'll come out here, heavy tight end set, and they'll run the ball, most likely going into halftime. Solomon Thomas back again, tackle at about the line of scrimmage, as this one will take away, maybe get one more snap off. Nah, we're going to head into halftime. This game close, 16-14, and we should be starting off with the ball. And we'll watch our first possession here of the second half as it's a great opportunity to get the lead. A field goal would even do it. We just need to avoid making stupid mistakes. <laughs> it's about as simple as that. As we go for an outside run from McCaffrey who basically gets back to the line of scrimmage. Not much extra there. I do like how they put the... Like where we started and where the line... like The little sticks on <laughs> the sideline. They're, they're off by a yard. It's just kind of weird. McCaffrey not getting a whole lot there on second down, third and six. We come out, looks like two receivers to the top, two running backs, another receiver at the bottom. Go for a quick pass. That's Montgomery. We have the block set up and not a good block there. I believe that was DeCastro. Should have demolished 32, but instead, fourth and inches coming up. And I might need to jump in here and have us go for this. And so far this year, I have not played a single down. I would say I would play about three-ish games a season. I'll count this as one just to ensure we get the first down. I'm gonna hand it off to Bodden. Gets three yards and we'll continue simming. Sometimes you just need to take control because Madden doesn't like to play very aggressively. So I'll do that here. Make sure we stay on offense. Do not get much there on the first down carry. McCaffrey 17 carries, 76 yards, two touchdowns on the day. He's basically been our entire offense. Could definitely use a spell out, but it doesn't look like they're doing that. We're coming out here. Two receivers to the top, two to the bottom. So we go for a pass across the middle here. Generals does a good job of typically breaking first contact. Mills, however, not having a great game. Two interceptions. Of course, we saw the one before half where he forced it basically two generals and was picked off. And did that lead? I don't think that ended up leading to any points. No, we didn't. But still lost an opportunity for us to get some points third and four here go for another pass nice pickup uh, from McCaffrey good job from a number 30 knock that pass away from generals who had to dive out for that one and I think again I might go for this and on fourth and four from the 44 we're gonna run some slants let's see what we could do here Gonna get Simi Fei Hoko, try to get to the outside, get a block. No, we didn't get the block from Generals, but we get the first down to the 33, and we'll go back into the simming. I'm trying to help us make sure we're not wasting a great opportunity here. And we'll come out with a heavy tight end set, two to the right, two receivers up top, McCaffrey in the backfield. And just not great blocking, really, along that side. Number 16 had an easy way into McCaffrey there. Still going to gain a four, so I mean, not awful for first down. Would have liked to see something, maybe a little else. Go back to McCaffrey, and again, just no blocking towards that second or third level. 24 gets right in there to stuff McCaffrey. We finally spell him out. At least I hope it's a spell out. And on third and six, just under pressure the whole time. That's going to be Miles Garrett with the sack. Fourth and 12. I'm not going to press anything. We should be going for a field goal here. Hopefully, Fairburn can hit it home for us. And indeed, he's coming out here, kicking from about the 43. So about a 53-yard field goal attempt coming up. We get it down. It's up. It has distance. And it's good. We will take the lead 17-16. to 16. With a little bit of help from me on some third down, and or a third down and a fourth down, I think. To make sure uh, we didn't waste that opportunity. I'll give it back to the sim for a bit, and if I need to jump in later, I'll make sure I do. And we'll go back to some quick sim here. Couple rushes by Melvin Gordon, gets him to third and five, and Uzma gets the first down for him. They just have so many weapons, our defense doesn't really know who to target. However, intercepted Curtis Riley, one of the guys that we brought in to uh, play basically the rest of the season. He gets a big play for us here. Great opportunity for us to widen this lead. A one point lead is nothing to sit comfortably with whatsoever. We get a dump off here to JJ. He's gonna get about five-ish on first down, or exactly five. 
And on second and five, we'll come out with a bunch to the bottom, two tight end bunch I might, I might need to add as well. So we go for a pitch to the outside, and no one, I repeat, no one gets a hand on 51. He gets straight through for the minus one on that. That is Al Shahir who gets the tackle. Third and six, running that same formation to switching sides. See what we do here. I'm assuming pass. Looks like it. As Miles Garrett just taps. I don't even know. Just barely even touches Mills and he just lays down for him. I don't we might be taking another field goal attempt here. I'm not sure it'll be a smart one, but we might be. And indeed we are, so from the 47, so a 57 yard attempt. I don't think this is a smart idea. And that's going up well short and wide. I don't understand why Madden does that. I also don't understand why we're still in the same semi. <laughs> As I said, till change of possession, and possession has changed. They go for a pass on first down, and it's intercepted! Paulson Adebo picks that one off and runs right towards a pack of Bills and is tackled at the 45. Two turnovers and back-to-back -back drives. The game's trying to give us a win here. We just need the offense to pull through. And we'll go into a quick sim, or a quicker sim here. Montgomery rushes for five. Then McCaffrey rushes for seven. So good to see McCaffrey still out there. Only a gain of one on the next rush, but still good he's out there. Gain of six on the next. Third and three. Ten-yard reception to J.J. Arcega white side. And then pass knocked away by Safety Jones. We get eight to Dalton Schultz. We'd like to see him get a few touchdowns to end this season. Pass thrown away. Go for it. We do, and we get the first down. Nice. First and goal we get four. We're at the goal line. Second and one. Touchdown, Christian McCaffrey. Three on the day. And with that touchdown, we take a nice lead. Harrison Phillips gets a sack. Second and 16. Uzma picks it all back up and more. First down, Melvin Gordon gets four. They need eight points. And there's about four and a half-ish minutes remaining. Throw it away there by Tua, second and 10. 17-yard Melvin Gordon injured Curtis Riley. Really unfortunate there. That will have Sherman coming back in. He's a higher overall, so it's fine. I just want to see what Riley could do. He had the pick. Penalty on, on, Lu on Lewis Marshall. He shouldn't have even been out there unless I guess they were in dime. They're looking prime to score here. Third and one. Five-yard reception. First and goal. Touchdown, Melvin Gordon. Do they go for two? Failed. They did go for it, but they did not get it. It will keep us in front only by two points. And let's see if our offense knows how to run clock here. Three minutes, 38 seconds remaining. We're up two. We need to be consistent. And that's not how you do it. <laughs> not a good first play there. Pass thrown out of bounds. Wastes only three seconds. And we lose a down. Gain of nothing on first down. We go for play action on second down, and a sack will at least run clock. <laughs> Not good play calling so far. Miles Garrett in with his second sack. I'm pretty sure that's actually his third sack. Third and 22 coming up next. And on third and very long, at our own 13, Miles Garrett in the zone. We have three to the top, one to the bottom. And that's going to be a throw out of a sack, which stops the clock. So, really bad. Really bad possession. And following a pretty good punt from Jake Bailey, who's basically kicking from the goal line, and the tackle was made about as soon as he caught it. He'll be starting from the 42, and that's Renfro, I believe. Get the catch. Gain a six on the first down pass. Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining. A field goal wins the game for them. And they'll come out with a bunch to the bottom here. And we're not really playing any sort of press. And Tua will just find a wide open number 11. He's going to get down to about the 32. And just like that, they're in field goal range. I believe that's Robbie Anderson. Yeah. And we're making a change here. I'm coming in here to help us try to win this game. Not that necessarily <laughs> I will as we hit the two-minute warning here. But haven't played much of any games this year. Let's try to help secure a victory here today. We'll go with a cover one strong safety spy, which is Sherman, interestingly enough. As they go for a run right down the middle, and our DT had no idea that he had the ball. 
That's going to be a gain down to the 24. Try to bring a double A-gap blitz. And we hit home. Bobby Okariki gets the sack on Tua. And they're down to a third and eight. Because I did not get... A, oh, the ball is out. Can Tack McKinley pick it up? He can. Avoid. Avoid. No, he doesn't. But we get the ball. Woo. Fantastic play there from the defense. And a... In a play that I didn't even want to run. I tried to check out of that play. Go back to a man coverage. Instead, we run that double A-gap blitz again. Solomon Thomas hits home. His knee knees the ball away. Tack McKinley picks it up. And we have a chance to win this game late. And I'll come in here and provide a little bit of uh, assistance to make sure that we don't run any stupid calls like we did on the last drive. Caffrey, get forward for a little bit. Make sure Bills are using their timeouts. And on second and five here, we're going to come out under shotgun. And I'm going to bring Fehoko across. I would like to hit a jet sweep with him. He has some good speed, some good elusiveness. We don't get to the outside, but he fights forward, gets a few extra yards, makes him use that timeout. And on third and one, going back to some old faithful here on this channel. Going for a fullback dive right down the middle. Bodden gets it. Bill should call their last timeout, and all we have to do is kneel this one out. And into victory formation and what's been a long time since we've been able to do this. We will kneel down the remainder of this game and just be victorious. It's a long time coming here. It's been a few weeks. Last episode we were able to get uh, two victories back to back, but then we lost the last game. We lost the first three of this, uh, of this episode. So it's been quite a bit. Four games. We went on a bit of a slide. Now time to build up for the remainder of this uh, season. Try to get a victory more, at least, than what we had last season. And this is a good start. We're going into our last episode with three victories. Last year we went into our last episode with only two. So there's a good chance we could make some history with this challenge. And after that victory, a few upgrades. I'll show I show these every now and then. And Junior General's getting his first upgrade is nothing to skip here. And really, you could go in any direction you really want from him. I feel like he's really just an overall threat for us. I want to get Route Runner up just so he could get open by any means, at all means necessary. For him, we're gonna get plus one to awareness, catching, medium route running, short route running, and spec catch. We also have a couple upper a couple other upgrades. Definitely gonna do accuracy for Fairburn, as that's what he struggles with the most. And then we have an upgrade for one of our tackles in Cedric Bryan, who I believe is the one who could pass block but can't really run block. So we'll continue to pump our archetype here in Agile. And he will get the plus ones to awareness, lead block, and pass block finesse with plus two to run block finesse. And as I simmed on over to our bye week, we see Solomon Thomas was awarded a player of the week as he had five tackles, four sacks, two forced fumbles. Definitely was key in us getting that victory with that late sack fumble on Tua. The tack picked up and allowed us to run out that clock. So a lot of praise to Solomon Thomas. He's definitely our best defensive lineman to this point. And after simming past the bye week, we see what our final stretch is. We're going to have the Colts, Titans, Chiefs, Broncos, and I think Raiders. I think we've only played them once. So still a lot is up in the air in terms of the AFC West 1, 2, or not really 1, but 2, 3, and 4. Chiefs definitely have this one in locked. They're 11 and 1 on the season, but a lot could change with the other rankings, and I would like to end this season not at the bottom. It would be nice, just a moral victory, really. But, uh, yeah, just would be nice. I also want to make sure we have at least five victories on the season. So we will be wrapping up the rest of this season come the next episode. So we'll have week 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. We'll, we'll sim through most of them, probably three. And then I'm assuming it might end up being simming through the first three and then watching the last two. But we'll see kind of how it goes. We'll play it by ear. But I hope you guys are enjoying this season, enjoying this series. And if you are, let me know. Share some love to this. Send us to some people who you know 
like sim franchises, if you know people that are fans of any of these California schools that we're building this team around, send it to them. Or if you are just a big fan of this series or one of the schools, hit that like button, subscribe. It's really fun doing these. I'm a big Pac-12 fan, Stanford fan primarily. But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying these. I know it's fun for me to be able to play with a lot of these guys that I've watched in college and whatnot. So hope you guys are enjoying. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.